I'm at the Secret Herb Garden, which is our first location for the theme, the garden and the gardeners. So it's great to be able to have some of the shelter of the greenhouses. And I'm going to make a number of um, ink and wash and maybe a bit of pastel studies. I'm going to begin first though by looking through my viewfinder and deciding what exactly interests me. There are these fantastic vines hanging above our heads. Everywhere you look there are these amazing uh, patterns uh, of foliage and different plant types. And then the greenhouse itself actually gives you a great structure those windows and frames. So I'm going to begin making a line drawing using the ink and then I think I'll go on to using some wash, a wash first drawing. And really I'm just trying to collect some material first. Uh, this could be the setting for the gardener model that we'll have next week uh, or it could provide a degree of pattern and texture for a background for something that I'm going to go on to develop with the figure. So for those of you coming to our location on Monday, uh, I'll be providing you with sharpened sticks and pots of ink and encouraging you to tip your stick down the way slightly so that the ink will flow. I'll get you to do as I'm doing, maybe a combination of a line drawing. These are my grapes. So a line drawing, where it'll be possible to really explore these different leaf shapes and the patterns that they make in a linear way as well as, of course, seeing something of the sort of linear structure of the, the greenhouse. And then to that, we're going to apply wash in order to have a tonal pattern. And as I've said, it's quite good to kind of reverse those two approaches and see what effect starting with one and then starting with the other as on your drawing but I think for these drawings and actually what I'm doing here you can see the ink the ink runs out a bit of course on the stick and that allows you to make some much softer grayer marks so if there's something you're not quite sure about you don't know whether to strengthen it develop it start with some of these kind of grayer marks or find a a finer part to your stick with which you can start quietly and then when you're sure you can amplify your marks with more black ink. So I did a little bit more and I've left, let my ink dry and now I've got my wash, the dilute ink, my handcrafted piece of sponge and I'm just going to block in a bit of tone so look with my eyes half closed some of my ink lines haven't dried completely so I can let some of that bleed a bit there were parts of my scene which I wasn't quite sure what to do I mean particularly the um, the vines and the grapes up in the in the sort of roof area uh, need to be dark against the light and there, I suppose there are just things in the distance that I'm actually not quite sure what to do with but just by putting in some of my tonal wash I think that that fills in the space when I'm using using my sp sponge I can do quite a lot of um, sort of textural work you know, you know, in a fairly loose sort of is it even arbitrary way and I might even see some 
I don't know, shadows on the floor. Or... So it doesn't, doesn't need too much, but I think to add that tonal pattern creates a lot more depth and form. And whoops, we picked up on lots of the, the wet stuff, but that's okay. So there we go. It's quite nice to work with the sponge and the wash and have a, a certain accidental quality to the results. So when that's dry, I might put a little bit of pastel on it as well. Next, I'm going to try a different approach, both to what I draw and how I draw it. So there are these wonderful fig plants uh, with their very particular leaf shape. And there's also something else which, I don't know, is it rosemary? Uh, this kind of very spiky, busy, looks like a herb plant. And how do I draw them? Well, what I'm trying to do this time is work with the tone first. And sometimes I'm going to do a kind of silhouette of a leaf. And then other times I'm going to try, try and draw the, the negative shape around them. So it's all a bit experimental, but it's a kind of terrific inspiration for finding shapes, patterns. So this might be something that, again, will feature in the way I work with some kind of composition. When I've got a gardener model next week, and then when I go on to put together compositions in oil or pastel. I'm hoping that there's going to be information here which I can use as a kind of inspiration for the, the plant gardening setting. So I need to let that dry and then I'm going to draw into that with line. So I would say with this particular sketch I'm, I'm much less sure what I'm trying to do, uh, or at least less sure of, of where it's all leading, but it's just a chance to collect a different kind of information. And by working with the wash as a set of simplified, sometimes even sort of accidental shapes, I can then see how adding the line, secondly, will help me extract from what's in front of me something that I can apply to a composition. So they're not so much well, they're not certainly not botanical drawings, but they are an attempt to really observe some of these extraordinary shapes and store them up for the next stage, which might be to play a part in a, a painting or a, a mixed media composition. So I'm going to work with the line over the wash and then see what else might be needed in terms of colour. And I've started with the, the fig leaves but uh, next to them is quite a different kind of texture and I, as I say I think it's something like a rosemary or... so it can be amazing just to look at these different sorts of foliage and plant forms and in a way be inspired to 
to find a different kind of mark to represent their individual quality. And as they get higher, I mean, up here, as they get up higher up here, we not only get leaves, but we get figs too. And that I would like to apply some colour to. Now it's raining, so thank goodness I'm in a greenhouse. But I'm just going to try a little bit of colour over some of this ink. Got some pastels. Uh, I'm going to mix a few colours. The great thing about the ink is it's it's there. It's kind of permanent and I'm just going to add colour in places, not add solid colour because I'd like some of the, the dark to show through. There's going to be a lot of green, but there's also a value in thinking in terms of warm greens, cool greens, yellow greens, blue greens. Um, what I've got down here, again I don't know my plants, but something a lot cooler down here. And I'm working a bit with the tip of the pastel and a bit with the side of the pastel, I'm not putting anything in too solidly, because I want that tonal and linear pattern that's underneath show through and that, that really helps I think bring things together and it, it means I don't have to actually finish um, finish the piece of work I can keep it as a, a study which more or less holds together because of the lines that are underneath and with the second one I think there's a, a different task But the colour can be part of that. I'm not so much thinking in terms of a, a scene, but as I've said, looking at ways of collecting patterns and seeing whether that information could be applied to a, a different sort of setting. So yes, I'm looking at that in a different way. Uh, possibly a, a more experimental way than, than the first. So that's a couple of things that I've worked with. Um, we'll be at the Secret, Secret Herb Garden on Monday. We'll have a model the following week in the studio and then we'll be at a different garden location the week after that. So I'm looking in terms of four weeks collect material and gradually on, on the towards the, the, th the fourth week put things together into some kind of composed piece. So hope to see you on Monday uh, or see you um, online somewhere. Well, somewhere